Then the tube is heated by a gas flame. The air within is exhausted by a pump through the exhaust tube. The getter is flashed electrically to absorb the remaining gases, and the exhaust tube is then sealed off by a tipping off torch. The metal tube is now ready for the addition of the base. Let's leave metal tubes for a minute. When a tube has an envelope of glass instead of metal, the assembly and exhausting process are somewhat different. The envelope is fused to the stem, and on the same machine, the gas is drawn out of the tube. Inside the tube, the getter is flashed by induction and absorbs most of the remaining gases, creating a very high vacuum. Now back to our metal tubes. Lead wires are threaded into the base, each wire fitting into the correct pin. The lead wires are trimmed to correct length and soldered by dipping the ends of the pins into molten metal. Like wooden soldiers, metal tubes march in single file to receive a coating of paint. Now dry, the tubes are tested to be sure there is no electrical leakage. And in the same operation, the base is crimped on tightly and the metal tube is ready for aging and test. After the tubes have been on these aging racks, the long cycle of meticulous quality control that began with the rigid testing of raw materials nears its end as the completed tubes are thoroughly checked and accurately tested to ensure that they will give flawless performance in your radio set. Without their big brothers, the giant power tubes in the broadcasting studios, the best receiving tubes in the world could bring you no reception. Many varieties and sizes of power tubes are required for many different purposes. Made on the same principles as the smaller tubes, the big ones are similarly assembled. Grids and cathodes, heaters and plates, stems and cages, often many times larger than those used in receiving tubes, are put together with infinite care. Skillful workmanship ensures that these tubes will send you music, news, comedy and drama without interruption. For in radio, as in the theater, the show must go on. The power tubes are exhausted of gases and sealed off. Again, the most rigid testing with apparatus of utmost scientific accuracy is necessary to ensure perfect performance of tubes that must not fail. They must not fail because it is not only the radio amusement of a people that depends on them. Human life itself often hangs upon the performance of the tubes you see now being tested. The safety of ships at sea, of the lives of flyers and their passengers, the health of a nation, the protection of your community from crimes and violence, the education of our children, the advancement of science. All these and many others are important services of the vacuum tube. In public address systems, the vacuum tube makes it possible for all to hear. schools, they bring lectures and announcements to all classrooms. Tubes amplify music for dancing. 
and sports announcements. Great airports would be crippled without the vacuum tube. And airliners ride the radio beam the tube makes possible. Vacuum tubes gave voice to silent pictures. Adding to the pleasure of millions and bringing knowledge from the far corners of the earth to the classroom. Radio began at sea saving life. Since then it has become vital in peace and in war. Radio is playing a major part in the relentless war against crime, guiding the vigilant police, directing them to the criminals they seek. Fighting fire, in safeguarding our natural resources, the vacuum tube is invaluable. The forest ranger in his plane directs firefighters on the ground. Sent high into the atmosphere, sensitive shortwave devices make possible long-range weather forecasts, vital for commerce and for navigator of air and sea. When calamity strikes, it is by radio that aid is summoned. Though regular communications are crippled, the amateur radio operators, the heroic hams, still bring aid with the help of the sensitive vacuum tube, bring serum from the sky to save human life. Helping to safeguard the nation's health is the electrocardiograph, detecting heart ailments, giving the doctor a written record, enabling him to see as well as hear the beat of the human heart. And in television, Yesterday, the dream of the scientist. Today, a living, working reality. Tomorrow, bringing entertainment to millions. Bringing music, drama, action from a central studio into their very homes. As so many other uses besides entertainment have been developed out of radio by the RCA laboratories, so will others come from television. One is already here. The electron microscope opening to scientists new worlds that men have never seen before. Making possible achievements of which once they had only dreamed, magnifying specimens as much as 100,000 diameters. 